Oh, hi. This is a little different than we normally have it. Normally, we're we're in different states, different cities. Today, we get to sit next to each other for Aloha Friday. So this is a little uh, a little different. So uh, we're excited to still give you guys some great content today uh, as we're all recovering from Thanksgiving. I know I am. I'm still. <laughs> we ate a lot last night. That's we, for sure. We ate, we ate a ton. But that's what Thanksgiving is for. Thanksgiving is to eat a ton, be with family, be grateful for the experience. And that's what we are. And it's kind of, I mean, it's really cool. We get to do this together for the first time. You always see us, you know, split up. I noticed that it looks like it's running a little slow, but at least our, our sound is right. And so stay with us. This is going to be such a good show today. Uh, hey, we got Margareta. She's finally on live with us. Hey, Margareta. Hey. Good to hear from you and see you. Uh, we got John Jensen coming in. Uh, yes, we did have a fabulous Thanksgiving. Hope you had a fabulous Thanksgiving as well. Let us know if our sound is okay. Uh, let us know that we're we're clear. We got a good connection right now. We're gonna bring our guest in, in in a second here. So hopefully we're still good. But definitely let us know. Lagging at all? If you can hear us, uh, you guys are in sync. We're good. Yes, great. <laughs> Great show, uh, a great band in the 90s in sync. <laughs> One of my favorites. Um, so in the honor of Thanksgiving, you know, we we're give thanks. And, I, you know, I saw a lot of social media posts, a lot of people being thankful for their family, all these different things. And, uh, you know, this is the day after Thanksgiving. Do we just stop being thankful? Yeah, it's we, over. It's, it's over. over. Now, you know, <laughs> no, now wait another year before you're grateful again. <laughs> so next year, this time next year, you can be grateful again. No, it, it, in all honesty, I love all the gratitude, all the thankfulness uh, that yesterday brought. But it should be a reminder to all of us, continue it out. Make it a daily practice throughout the entire year. Yeah, 364 more days until Thanksgiving. Let's be grateful 364 more times until we get to be on Thanksgiving again. And I love what you started. You had the five days of gratitude. I don't know how many of you follow along and did that, but it was good. You know, each day had a different theme to be grateful for. And that's when you really get to tap into the different levels of gratitude is when you think about a very particular thing that you're grateful for. So what are you grateful for today? Today, I'm really grateful to be here with my family. The only one I'm missing is Jason, your, your oldest brother. Wish he could be here, but you're here with your beautiful wife, Megan. Chase is here, Daniel's here, Kathy's here. And this is our first Utah experience of Thanksgiving. And it was awesome. We went on a hike up to a you know a waterfall. Then we had a great with the families around this neighborhood. We met people and just so nice. And boy, did we eat. <laughs> yeah, we eat. I mean, it was a feast along with some dessert, uh, a lot of dessert. So um, it, was a, it was a great time. And what I'm grateful for is a lot of different things. I mean, obviously being here in beautiful Utah, uh, being with my family, but also you mentioned it, the five days of gratitude it was great to see all these people um, that I wasn't even expecting. A lot of people joining in on the five days of gratitude and uh, Tony, who's who's chiming in right here. Mark, can't wait to hear more. He didn't quite follow the rules. He uh, <laughs> he went off on his own little gratitude tangents. But that's the thing is <laughs> gratitude has no rules. You can be grateful for anything. And I'm just grateful for all the responses and all the people that were a part of that. But again, it's a, it's just a thing that let's keep it going. It's not just the five days. It's not just yesterday. Let's continue to be grateful each and every day of our lives because it's, it is powerful. Um, and really, you know, we bring in the tip of the day. I think that is the tip of the day. That's the tip of the day is to continue being thankful. Don't just end it at Thanksgiving. Make it a daily habit. And I'll tell you, your life will change. When you make this a gratitude, a habit every day, start your morning in gratitude, finish your day in gratitude. So I kind of stole your uh, tip. Of well, the day, yeah, I and I just want to emphasize a little bit because sometimes when I'm feeling down or I've got stress, man, all I do is I have a practice of writing 10 things I'm grateful for. By the time I get to six or seven, I'm going, what was I stressed over? What was <laughs> I worried about? You it's, forget it's about a the game natives. changer. It's a game changer. Absolutely. So then. Obviously, even in a, a, a week like this, we still have the quick, and the quick <laughs> this week has to do with gratitude. Um, but here, let's see. I got it written right here. It's actually from the book of Matthew. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Now, it might not make total sense, but if you followed me on Instagram and you saw, you just add one word, and it's the word of the week, gratitude, and this whole quote, quick, 
makes a lot more sense. So let me read it again. The quote of the week with the word gratitude inserted in there. Whoever has gratitude will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have gratitude, even what he has will be taken from him. Now that is eye-opening. That makes sense. Now we bring some gratitude in. You're just going to attract more things to be grateful for. But I love the comment. Uh, one of my buddies, Luke Black, commented on that because I said, fill in the blank there. And he's like, beer. The answer is beer. So whoever has beer will be given more and he will have an abundance. <laughs> whoever does not have beer, even what he has will be taken from him. I don't know. What do you think? Gratitude or beer? <laughs> oh, my God. No, but the truth of it is, is that you think about it. You, you don't, might not have very much, but you're grateful for it. Then you have an abundance. You have a lot, but you're not grateful for it. You have nothing. So it's really a, a very, very solid statement when you throw in the, the gratitude part. Perfect. Perfect. And then last last but not least, before we bring in uh, Mark, which is, it was awesome, is we just asked, hey, if you're sitting sitting there, uh, you've just enjoyed Thanksgiving, now you're just kicking back and joining family, help us reach as many people as we can, engage, comment, share this video right now so we can you know spread the word because I'll tell you right now, Mark is going to blow us away. And I hope he's, he's a little frozen right now in the lobby section. So I hope he's able to uh, to come in and um, and give us some great stuff. But Mark is, you know, he was he, he had a background in, um, you know, corporate America. He was a corporate executive or Bank of America um, in 2008. He, he founded his McAuliffe group. And, and um, really, it's all about getting your life of success to significance. And he's a, he's a speaker. He's got a ton of certifications. That, I mean, he's got a long resume of all of his coaching certifications. He's learned from some of the greatest, you know, mentors out there. Some names that you might recognize. Tony Robbins, if anybody knows that name, kind of rings a bell. Um, John Maxwell, he's one of the, you know, the higher ups in John Maxwell. Mary Morrissey, uh, Les Brown, Dave Ramsey, just to name a few, and then he got he went through our extreme yeah, focus. We're really excited! I love Mark and and getting to know Mark. And when he called me, he said, "Hey, I want I want to be a certified extreme focus coach." It was like, "Wow, that's so cool! That's so neat!" Because I love people who are always advancing, always, no matter how much you know. If you think you know it all, then you know what it's it's over. But if you always every day can advance and learn more. And that's what I love about Mark. He's always advancing. That's why he is one heck of a coach because he brings everything. It's not like, okay, it's only this. It's this and this. And I think Extreme Focus um, has been a big uh, – Oh, he's, he's a beast. He's a beast he's, now. He gets he's to totally bring the beast. beast to his coaching. <laughs> and, uh, so let's bring him in. He, he's frozen right now, but I, earlier we were have, at least having the audio, and that's all that matters. If we can at least hear him, uh, let's see what he's happens. He's brilliant. So, so we're, we're bringing him in now. All right, Mark, you are frozen, and it looks like you're picking your nose. All right. <laughs> can you hear us? I can hear you fine and dandy. Perfect. Awesome. We can hear you, and that's that's really all that matters. So, uh, well, I was going to have you being the main picture on the screen, but since you're frozen, maybe I'll just make you the smaller. Oh, that just makes us. Uh, that cuts us That off, cuts so. you out. Oh, that's that's right. I don't mind being cut off. Fine if it cuts I'm you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sit up straight, and we'll, we'll be good. Um, uh, so me being, being the smaller picture will increase viewership. I assure you, I've got a face made for radio, so it'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you got a voice, uh, you know, that's very powerful voice made for movie, uh, uh, trailers. <laughs> so Mark, when I ask you, we always do this every, every time we bring a guest in, what are you in honor of Thanksgiving? What are you grateful for or thankful for? Well, you know, it, it's, uh, first and foremost, uh, it's an honor to, to be with you all today. And so my gratitude goes back to, to family. I mean, um, it's something that I professed uh, many, many years ago that I would not have. I would never get married. I'd never have kids. And I'd never move back to Kansas City. And um, yesterday, celebrated Thanksgiving with uh, my entire family, my lovely wife, and my two children. So if I say never, you. Uh, you know, it's probably a getting ready for a change of some magnitude. <laughs> that's awesome and and you're in kansas city right where you never go <laughs> that's right we're all i'm, I'm, I'm oh for three <laughs> well speaking of of three um you know the title of this video is is the three keys to living with purpose and i want to just i mean without even further ado i want to jump right into it because it's really great stuff that i mean every time i i get a chance to talk with you i always gr get some great nuggets and learn something new. But one thing that you talk about that I love 
is this concept of, of living with purpose, not just living, not just not just surviving, but but thriving. And I want to talk about that. So I'll let you have the floor here and what you really uh, and you can take it from there. Yeah, you know, I think it's something that uh, that goes back. We, we we all have in common, obviously, and uh, through extreme focus and be a beast. You know, that's why I love love Dave, your dad, and, and and you and your entire family for that matter. Is you guys live that principle? I mean, you 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 live it by example. And um, you know, it came to me uh, not necessarily by design. It came to me by uh, by default in the form of an accident. I was training for a triathlon. I'd spent 22 years in corporate America. I was a managing director for FedEx for a number of years and then Bank of America, as you said. But, you know, my definition of success, I used as a measuring stick of, you know, when I have enough, when I have the right car, when I have the right clothes, when I have the right house, when I had enough, then I would be somebody, you know, and then I would do amazing things. And um, I woke up in a hospital. I was uh, on a training ride for a, a triathlon in uh, Chico, California, of all places, and woke up in the hospital with a note. You know, you've been hit. Uh, here's the stitches. Here's this. And then kind of outlined my injuries because for the prior eight hours, every time I came to, I'd ask, where am I? What happened? Holy cow. How many stitches is that? What happened to my head? What's going on? And where's my bike? So they wrote the answers out because I got tired of answering them. But it was at that moment I really had to start to um, reflect on my life and, 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 and where I was in life was exactly how I designed it. You know, I had professed never have kids, never get married. And, and, and you know, I, I let things define who I was going to be. I mean, that was my definition of who I was. And I realized that, hey, there had to be something more. And, um, and started utilizing some of the principles we had used, in, not only in, in, in life up until that time as I applied them into the corporate world, and it's why I love the Be a Beast principle so much is it, it, it gives you the tools. I mean, I got a, I got a quiver of arrows that just whip them out and start shooting, and, and it just literally makes sense. And, and when, when, when Dave was sharing them, I was like going, wow, this is, this is so good. I mean, you know, the soft skills that we learn from or that I learn from or that we teach get people to a certain level. But staying and maintaining that level is so vitally important without the right tools. We just don't get there. And, and what I realized is you and I were talking the other day. It's kind of like a I love ice cream. So it's like a, a, a triple scoop ice cream cone. You know, I, you know I, I thought when I had enough stuff on that first scoop, I'd be somebody in the second scoop. Then I do something amazing in the third scoop, and I realized I had it inverted. Really, the most important part of that was really finding out what I wanted out of life. What was, what was the vision I had for what I really wanted, you know, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, vocationally, really getting really crystal clear on that vision because I knew I couldn't get to it, but I had to start to come from it. And it all started not with the having, but on the being, being genuine, authentic, transparent, not an egomaniac, not going Mach 2 with the hair on fire, look at the right watch, look at the right clothes, things of that nature. But really, who are we being? And, and, and really redefining not just living a life of success, but living a life of success and significance. And in and, and that being piece, really, really hit me hard because up until that time, you know, whenever you're reflecting going, if, if that accident would have just been just a hair more, I wouldn't be here. And mm -hmm. what, what, what imprint did I leave on the world? I mean, what, what is there any indication that I was here that wouldn't be washed away like a, a tide rolling in on a footprint on a sandy beach? What, 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 what was my footprint left on the world? And Man, I didn't have a, a, a lot of tangible ones or significant ones. I'll put it that way. There, was, there were little foot, little fingerprints here and there. But, um, you know, that, that, that being aspect. But the first piece of that, that first step, is really getting clear on what you really do want and, and, and understanding that conditions and circumstances don't, don't really define where we are, where we'll be, or where we're going to go. So there's another principle, and, and there's, there's all sorts of BBS principles we can go down the path on. But... Whenever we start looking at that component of it is, is do I know what I really want? And I'm willing to surrender the need to know how to do that. And am I willing to do the work hard enough to start to be the person I was created to be 
not the person that I want everybody to perceive me to be, but the one that I really am meant to be. Excuse me real quick, get a drink of water. But in, in, that, in that being, that's the key point of, of where we are, where we're going to be, and who we're going to surround ourselves with is comfortable in our own skin, doing what we love to do, helping people be what they want to be, and whatever that may, you know, Zig says, we help enough people get what they want, we get what we want. But what is that we really want for ourselves? Because we have to come from that so that we can help other people do it. So the, the vision is the first step of that, then the being, then the doing, and really the, the haves are the sprinkles, the nuts, and the cherries on that ice cream cone. Because yeah. if you are being who you're meant to be, you do the things you're meant to do, the haves are just the fruits that you finally get to reap along the way. So can you see this? That's it at a high level. I see it, baby. I'm hungry already. Is it? Did I have the right order? We got we got B in the front or the bottom, then we got do, then we got have on the top, and I got to add some sprinkles to it. But would the cone then be the vision? Yes, absolutely. Without the vision, you just got three scoops of ice cream hanging out there somewhere. <laughs> well, I mean, the cone is in a V shape too, so that's actually a good. This, see, I'm learning. I already knew the snow cone thing, but I'm already learning something. This in. You know, you know when, you if you're not going to be a professional, not going to be a professional football coach or a professional football player, you're yet you a graphic artist design the future ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to doodle, but I, I added my sprinkles because I do want to have ha uh, sprinkles on my half scoop. Um, so you, you brought up you brought up vision, which was a huge part of you know being. And, and Tony, I got to say, Tony jumped in here too, which is awesome. Most important, what I wanted out of life, it was who I am being, not what I have. Love it. So he's, you know, it, it, we're flipping the snow cone uh, upside down, like you said, is, is the being comes first, which is beautiful. I love it. Veronica's joining us. Happy Friday. Anybody who is uh, just coming, uh oh, Tony, my ice cream fell off my cone a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of us, for those of us watching our weight now, we eat out of a out of a cup instead of a cone, so it's okay. <laughs> you, you've lost your vision. <laughs> I've never given up the cone. I'll take the extra weight. I'm sorry. I love the cone. <laughs> I'm going to keep my whole hold on to my vision no matter what. <laughs> That's right. but, I want to talk about that a little bit because, you know, you have you brought up the animals and, um, you know, one that we really relate to with vision and how important that is and that helps you be it more so you can do it is is the Canadian goose. We actually, as we're walking over here, we saw a couple fly overhead. And I know some of you extreme focus coaches know what the goose is, but that's it's Valdepod. Hopefully I can I, I just lost my, my texting ability here. So I don't know if I can comment Valdepod how it's spelled. Maybe I'll just have to write it on the uh, on here. But you want to tell them what Valdepa stands for? Well, first of all, what we're talking about, you know, what you value, the, the, the Val in, in, in value pot is your value. It really dictates who you are and what you achieve. And many times I did a study, Mark, maybe you, you know this. I did a study on, you know, if two people have the exact same backgrounds, have the exact same opportunity, why does one achieve and the other one doesn't? And it really gets down to what you value. Most people say, well, I value that achievement. But the truth is, is your actions are really going to show you what you value. And most people value their comfort rather than their achievement. Because to step out into anything, you got to be willing to stretch a little. And if you're willing to stretch a little, then you value that, that what you wish to achieve more than that comfort zone that you stay in. And I'd say, and this is not a criticism, it's just what I found that those that don't achieve as much as others aren't willing, they actually value their, um, their comfort zone more. So anything you're going to do is first of all, what's the value you put on it? And then the DE in Valdepa is describe it. What no, is it? Desire. You know, desire. I mean, what value is, you, is it the desire? Right. The value the more you value it, the more desire you have, which is then going to fuel the power, be the power that's going to leap you into achievement. So it's value, desire. There you go. Yeah. He's posting it up. Can you see it? See, I can't type for some reason. It's not letting me type. So I got to just write. I'm going to do it old school. Hopefully you guys can all read that. Is it mirrored? Is it backwards for anybody? Hopefully you guys can read that. It's not you allow. Irazid. 
<laughs> no, it's value. Value creates the desire, which is the power, and it gives you the power to achieve it. And the reason we're bringing that up, and you know, desire is one of the uh, strongest emotions we have or motivators that we have. Is you know, when we got our we got our snow cone here, right? If you value you having maybe having this the sprinkles at the top, and then you're going to have that desire and that power to be. We're talking about be. That's where it comes from. And that's what Mark's Mark's talking about. So I want to pass it back to Mark. But yeah, and as we pass it back to you, Mark, I mean, you, that's a perfect example. You found that you need a new value system, basically, on Absolutely. what you value Absolutely. more than you know. At one point, which wasn't working for you, you valued about what you would have before you could be right. something, instead of valuing. Well, yeah. Your, and I, and I was real clear on what I didn't want. You know, I wasn't clear on what I did want. Yeah, and, so and, and that are. definition uh, on that, and that burning desire, you know, that desire aspect of, of Valdapa there, you know, is it is it a want, is it a hope, or is this a burning desire? And you know, I had said never get married up until 30, 39 years, forty eight weeks, or however many it ended up being. I got married just before my fortieth birthday. But to put it to, to kind of put it into time pressure in compression here is. I ran my whole life. Whenever I got serious about what I did want versus what I didn't want, 90 days later, I went out to dinner with Ivy. And 90 days after that, we were engaged. Nine months later, we were married. A year later, we moved back to Kansas City. And two years later, we adopted the kids. So, you know, what, what I had ran from for 40 years, once you get serious about it, I mean, lo and behold, what I wanted was right in front of me the whole time. And I didn't see it, you know. So, uh, the whole success factor of being at the right place at the right time, that's not true. I mean, you don't have to be lucky to, to, to live a life with success or significance. It could be right before us, and we don't even know we're at the right place at the right time or, our, or the right contacts for our business. How many contacts do we have that if we would be willing to ask something that, that, that we haven't asked up until now, how successful could we be in business 25 miles from our house, not across the country, but right in front of our eyes. So the being part in that, that whole descriptive standpoint of getting very specific on being, the critical aspect of that be piece is without the being, without the knowing of that person that, that fits that vision, any being will do. We can be anything because it doesn't serve where we're going. Any, any road to get us there, number one. Number two is without knowing or being, People can smell a, a, a fake a mile away, especially in today's society. They've looked you at on social media. They've looked at you anywhere and everywhere to see if you're out of alignment with what you're professing. So the whole fake it till you make it program doesn't work either. So there's never been a time to be genuine, more authentic. And, you know, the self-image, self-esteem debate, most people confuse them, or I did. Anyway. I don't know about most people, but I've, I certainly did is, you know, my self-image, I wanted you to think I had my stuff together. I wanted you to think that I had achieved something based upon what I had versus the self-esteem that I think I was worthy of it. You know, I kept trying for more, 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 more of this to kind of fill the pit and the hole. And, uh, man, it was, it was a humbling, humbling effect as we went through that. And then to give my permission to get out of the box, you know, I had put myself in this very specifically divine box. You know, this is what I'm going to do. This is my life. This is what I'm going to go. And and to be open to something outside of that. And, and it's another principle we teach in, in Be a Beast that's another another killer is is, uh, is is no bow. And I'll throw that back to you in a minute. But, you know, no limits to life. What would my life look like in that relationship? What, 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 you know, what would a soulmate look like? Just not a significant other or thing. What would that be like? And in kids, you know, yes, no, maybe. What, what, yeah, okay, boom. Here's what it would look like. And if I could show you, I was looking in here. I'm in Ivy's office, actually. I was trying to see if she still has that vision board. Uh, the kids we put on there, lo and behold, if I took a picture of Tommy and Lily today and put them on there, you kind of go, holy cow, they look like that. So it's it's... It's kind of scary, and I'm not saying vision boards make that happen. You still have to do some things. But that, that significant piece about really clearly getting genuine with the face in the mirror and comfortable with that, um, it, you know, it took – I thought it took me a short period of time, but eight years later, I'm still trying to get used to, to the face in the mirror and 
that's why surrounding yourself with you guys and, and other people that are commenting here on the, on the, on the screen have, uh, have poured into me personally uh, and, and, and allowed my growth to continue to grow and, 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 be, and become better and better at that and, and, and following many of your examples. But, you know, I, I'll stop there for a second because at least for many of my clients or many of the people I've been a, a affiliated with, they have a problem thinking outside of what we've painted them into. You know, yeah. get a job, get a career, do this, do that. And it leads to boredom, frustration, and, and, and early gravehood. But, you know, the, the, the possibilities. And, Dave, the journey you're on in Utah, I can't think of anybody better right now to say, hey, this is how we're living. But, you know, the whole no, the no boundaries thinking. I, I, I'll, I'll pause there because if, if, if there was ever a time for us to do that right now as we end 2017 and start 2018, who will I be in 2018 that I, that one or two things that I could have shifted in 2017 or, or, or what's next for me in being that person so that I can understand the things and the vision that's forward, then I'll define what I'm going to do along the yeah. way to get there. But I'll stop there and throw it back to you guys for a second because you, you, you define it so well. Well, and I want to just say, you know, that just say, you know, the doing, I'm getting a little echo. Hopefully it's, stops. I think it sometimes stops. So, you know, the doing and the having, like you're saying, comes from being. And a lot of times we skip that because we got to do, do, do to show everybody what we have, have, have. And it's, you know, keeping up with the, the Joneses. I got, I got this nice car. I got this nice thing. And it's, it's all this have, have. But if you're not being, then you're truly, like you were saying, fake it till you make it. Now, I got to bring that up because we talked about this when we brought bots on way back when our first uh, episode, fake it till you make it, being a positive thing. For two different ways, but the way you brought it up, I'll explain that in a second. I think there's two different ways we can look at fake it till you make it. The ones that maybe you lack a sense of confidence and you look up to somebody that you, you know, you uh, a mentor right. or an idol and you you adopt some of the traits that they have. You surround yourself with those kind of people just to get lifted up in that confidence and that energy. And then you feel a little stronger, but really that confidence was always within you. That was just a way to unlock it by mimicking maybe like for me growing up, it was like Drew Brees. I wanted to be like Drew Brees. I wanted to do everything he did because he always carried himself in that way. I had the traits Drew Brees had, but I just needed something to, to help me unlock. But what you're talking about with fake it, see, make it is, is showing what you have, basically um, being out of integrity and then just showing, hey, 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 this is what I got. But then you're not being, you're not actually doing the things that you say. And right. that's that's the fake it, see, you make it where, yeah, that's, that's never going to, in the long term, be right. successful for you. You got it. Like you're saying, you got to well, start with. I'm trying to think. I think we got one down here too. Um, I mean, you know, I usually have a couple of them, but you know, the, the the fake it till you make it part that I'm coming from is this mask that we're wearing. You right. know, bar borrowing from somebody, borrowing confidence, borrowing their work traits, ethics, and and psychologically getting ourselves to perform like somebody's one thing. But if I put on this fake facade that I've got all my stuff wired and I know I don't, and frankly, you know that I don't more than I probably know that I don't. You just haven't said anything. But when I take that mask off and stop faking that I got my stuff together and I'm humble enough to say, hey, I make a lot of mistakes. I got a lot of room to grow. And, and vulnerability now comes into being. Well, vulnerability, when I grew up, if you were vulnerable, you got your butt kicked. You know, I mean, that vulnerability was not a word that was associated with any kind of leadership. I mean, in, in my world anyway, I mean, you had to be right and you fought to be right and things of that nature. But I, I, I'm glad you clarified that because there's a big difference between, you know, borrowing from and, 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 and sometimes you, you do have to tell yourself you're confident because, frankly, if you've never done it before, you're probably scared to do it. So you've got to borrow that from somewhere versus being an actor and wearing a mask that is that is fake, transparent, and kind of empty plastic. So I think you were going to go into to, to, to Nobo, but I want to just, yes, I fully agree with that. Thanks for that clarification. Oh, that's perfect. And I can't, for some reason, it's not letting me show some of the comments that are coming in, but Veronica, I just got to reread it because it's great. Aaron and I have been have worked on people looking at themselves in the mirror. It is interesting how many people have issues with themselves and what they see in the mirror. And it just goes with what you're saying. If you're wearing a mask, you don't really recognize the true self of yourself in the mirror. And Veronica and Aaron do a great job of, of unlocking that. And Billy's coming in. Hey, Billy, how you doing? Good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, 
but it's just like you're saying, it's being vulnerable. And 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 you didn't see that in leaders uh, way back, but you're we're starting to see some leaders let down their walls. And those are the most powerful leaders that the ones that are saying, hey, I don't have all the answers, but I'll tell you right now, I'm being as best as I can. And I got I to gotta throw in last week's quick, and it's right here in front of me, so I have to say it. It's just, it goes perfectly with this. I, it should have been this week's quick as well. But uh, what Roger Anthony says, it's one thing to teach a principle, another to live it. But the greatest right. by far is just so thoroughly be it that your very presence does the teaching. Those are the best teachers, the best leaders. And because those people are not trying to put on a face to be like everybody else, they're truly living. No bow. I wrote it down. You, you brought it up earlier. Let me see if I can get it on the screen. No bow. And no I want you to tell no about boundaries. It. Yeah. And I, I got no bow. Yeah. And I got to say that, you know, in this discussion, the people I love being around are the most honest, the ones that don't try to put on this facade of I'm this and that. And I lived that life and it was it was not a good life. You know, I I had, you know, had to have everything and be this perfect whatever. And it's not it's a fake um, knowing that we all have our ups and downs. But together, we're strong because of that. My life is so much better. I lost everything earlier uh, in my career through I had some major real estate that uh, interest rate went real high. And I was just dating Shane's mom at the time. And you know what? I I learned such a valuable lesson when I lost everything because I remember she still wanted to date me. And I'm like, why do you want to date me? I don't have any money anymore. <laughs> and she's like, so? You value your worth yeah, and what you have. I know. And I, I was like going, are. wait, you like me for me? <laughs> I'm not even sure I like me for me, you know? So it was a great wake up call. Um, and so I really love this subject. And when we go to Nobo now out of it, and I got to say one more thing before I go to the Nobo, Ivy, you know, I'm so glad that you had your wake up call, Mark, because Ivy is so beautiful inside and out. And I can't think of you and your family, you know, not being there together because I've only known you since you've known Ivy. I didn't know you before. So I was, I'm very, very, you know, happy for you and, and, and for us because, you you know by opening it up you created something that is really magic and i just want to say for the, the new people chiming in right now we uh, we have some of our regulars coming in matt moss you know happy thanksgiving chris what's up happy turkey day hopefully you had a, a turkey bowl yourself we had a little one here as well but for those that are just chiming in we we've we, we talked about a lot already so far but it's all about you know if you, in order to have you gotta be you gotta start with b who are you from the inside then the doing will come and then the having will come. A lot of people have that flip. I got to have to show people who I am and, and my self-worth and then I can become somebody. Well, we're going to talk about right now is you don't have to be like everybody else. Keep up with the Joneses. Wear a mask is just to fit in. You can truly be Nobo. Now take on Nobo and let it know. And what's up, Tank? <laughs> so, so Nobo really means no box, no boundaries. I mean, if you say, hey, I – think and I live outside the box. That means you still believe there's a box. Blow up the box. And we use the fish, the flying fish, as our example to remind us of no box, no boundaries, because come on, a fish isn't even meant to breathe outside of the water. It can't do that. And it didn't have wings, but somehow I didn't let that stop it from when, you know, this one species of fish going, you know what? You can't get me. I'm out of here. And you go flying. And if we live our lives without that box that we tend to put ourselves in, we just open ourselves for a more exciting life. The more we can break down our judgment of ourselves and a judgment of others, the freer we are to really tap into amazing things. That's where if I've been able to create things is because when I blow up the box, it opens the door to all kinds of creative spirits. It might be crazy of going, well, no one's done that. Why would you do that? Because I don't know, I was inspired to do it. And that's what I love the quote from uh, Steve Jobs. Those that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that will change the world. <laughs> and that's who we all can be, change our own lives first. You know, we think about the world, well, every little thing we do can have an impact in our own world, which creates a ripple effect out into everyone else's world. And so, Mark, you were talking so beautifully how you had this experience of all these things of what you didn't want. And then all you got really focused on, this is what I'm going to be. And then look at your life now. You're, you know, you're over the top as far as 
as far as in my book, as far as a business coach, you know, family man, really dialed in on that level. And when you put all that together, that's what I call real wealth. Yeah. You know, right. it's not just money. It's not, it's, 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 it's the whole picture. It's a whole package. Well, and without that, go ahead. Well, I was just going to give you the, the actually the floor one more time before we get into the final four. If there's anything else you wanted to, to touch on. Yeah, no, I, just one thing real fast. You know, the, the, the key to that vision, I guess I would circle back around and how Valvapa is so cool, is if we don't know what we really value, you know, people ask me and, and they're always wanting to do. They want an accountability coach. They want all these different things and, and have to take a step back on it because they want to do all sorts of stuff. And I said, well, you know, the doing is so great and that's fantastic. But let's go back to that vision and value. The foundational aspects of this is that if we don't know what that is and we use that as the filter, things that we start to do, we've got the right to do whatever we want. But is that really leading me in the direction? If you go back to Thoreau's quote, you know, imagine the life and take an advance confidently in the direction of the life that we're imagining, you know, that component of it, that becomes the filter. Is this right or wrong or does this serve me best? then that next step will show up that advances me towards what it is that I'm imagining. So not only is it important on the being, but before we even know what we're going to do, those values, who we're being and why we're being that on that vision is critical because then we can actually start to use that as a filter of what I'm actually going to do, what is going to serve me best and, and who I'm affiliated with to help guide me. If I'm not sure, you know, do they have a compass I can borrow or lean over the shoulder and look at it that's going to get me in that direction? So that uh, that vision piece in Valdepa continues to, to, to be a, a great, great tool to keep me on the right course, to keep me doing the right things so that I have what I want to have. That would be it. I love it. I'm going to give you, anybody a chance right now. If you want to, I'm going to hold this up. Screenshot this right now. And if you want to share it, I would love for you guys to share it. But screenshot this right now because we talked about Valdepa. We talked about Nobo, what all that means. But then you got the snow cone right there. You got the be, do, have snow cone. And I'll tell you, that's the most tasty snow cone or ice cream cone I've ever had. And uh, so it's right there. If you missed it on the screenshot, go back, check out the replay. But I want to give you guys that little opportunity. Um, there. So let's get right into the final four. Same four. Oh, now now my texts are working. Interesting. Um, well, maybe that was meant to be. It was meant to be that I wrote it down on the notepad. Right? That, you know what? That's, that's, <laughs> that's called being adaptive. We have the crocodile, you know, that learn to be adaptive to an ever-changing environment. Well, an ever-changing <laughs> show, we become adaptive. You know, we didn't know you had that art within you. Now we do, you know. I'm an artist. In <laughs> more ways than now, I, last week, we talked about adaptive leadership. So I'm trying to be adaptive. I was learning from Savika last week. So um, I love it. So Shall we? Uh, shall we get into the final four? You always, you always start the first question. Well, the final, the final four is right. here. I'm going with all this adaptive. I want you to take the first one. Today. Oh, jeez, putting me on the spot. <laughs> See how adaptive you can be. That's what this whole beast training is all about. On the spot, take a breath, relax, go for it. I think I can handle it. Okay, number one, Mark, are you ready? No, I'm ready, baby. Okay, that wasn't the number one question, by the way. That was, <laughs> that was number zero. Number one is who was your biggest influence growing up or, you know, biggest influence now? Any role models? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think it goes without saying uh, parents, positively or negatively, uh, the biggest influence. My mom, I, I, I you know, I, I think everybody thinks this is their mom, but I think my mom should be canonized. I mean, she... Uh, she sacrificed, she gave, she did, uh, she influenced so many things. And still to this day, continues to. So I'd say mom is number one, but uh, as a tag, a little asterisk to that, had, um, had Karen Rosecrans, the teacher in high school, not stepped into my life about leadership, there's no direction or no telling what direction I would have gone. So I, uh, I owe and I'm so grateful for her to take an interest to in me at a very young age that um, I'm actually doing now what she made me write in an envelope when I was 16, just before I turned wow. 17. Wow. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And my mom handed me that envelope and she was, I think this might help you out. And uh, it defined basically being a, a coach, trainer and speaker. So it, uh, 
when we dream and we get used to it, we know what we really want to do. We just bury it for a long time. But my mom would be uh, by far and away the most influential, I guess. That, nice. that is awesome. And, you know, I think that's a message for everyone out there. Here's one person had you do one thing that has carried and influenced your life to be. And think of how many people that you have influenced in your life. So this one person, that's the ripple effect. Every single person out there, no matter what you do, you can have that kind of influence. One thing had that kind of influence. And then obviously your mom was with you all along, but I love that. Right. So now at this state in your life, you know, you're no, number two on the final four questions. What would you tell your younger self? Now with what you know, you could go back and you could be an inspiration to you as a younger child, what would you tell yourself? Oh, this, this could be a, a three day episode right there on that question. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, I, uh, to, to, to be grateful, you know, I wasn't grateful. Um, I, I, um, I was a churn and burn. I, I wasn't the smartest person, but by God, I knew how to work and I could outwork, out manipulate. And, and, and that wasn't necessarily a positive thing, but I would go back and say, man, just take a deep breath, slow down a little. A little I mean, enjoying the moment would, would, would go so far in, in the journey of being able to appreciate the, the things that I did have, because as soon as they happened, I was on to the next thing versus just really just soaking that in, whether it be an experience, a relationship, a dinner, uh, a world-class dessert or anything else. I was, I was more interested in you're impressed that I got you this dessert versus, man, that was a fantastic dessert, you know, and just suck the marrow out of the moments, man. I, I, <laughs> I was going so fast. I didn't, I didn't know what it was. So just slow down, be humble, be grateful and uh, that you're loved and you're going to be okay. And, uh, and, and, and just follow your heart. I mean, if I'd have followed my heart that, you know, I may never met my wife, so I don't know. I, I don't believe in the redos, but um, I, I, I sure wish that I would have uh, uh, appreciated and saved a lot of that money that I thought I was going to impress you with that I blew on a lot of different stuff that led to zero satisfaction. And, and who knows, Mark, maybe you ran across Ivy, 10 years before, but you just didn't have the eyes. Wow. Yeah, that very well could have been. <laughs> I hope everybody watching right now is like taking notes. I mean, this is unbelievable stuff. He's, he's not just telling his younger self. He's telling all of us right now. It's such great wisdom in all of that. And I'll say right now, just in you talking about gratitude and we, we started off this, um, you know, this broadcast in gratitude, especially with Thanksgiving. One thing we got, um, fortunate enough to have the opportunity to do yesterday is we were we were joining a, a big group of of people that you know they have their thanksgiving traditions they welcomed us into their home with welcoming arms and they had a tradition as we we passed over a bowl with a little uh, kernel of corn in each one everybody picked out one we passed the bowl once we got back to the top everybody had to share what they were thankful for and then you put the kernel of corn and then we went around and i'll tell you right now it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving, like I said earlier, to, to do some kind of like tradition like that. But just the power of everybody in that gratitude, everybody in that thankfulness. We were all truly embracing this moment, as you say, in that. And it was it was powerful. It was uplifting. There were some tears that were shed. There was some laughter just in a little you know setting of, of gratitude. How amazing would that be to live in that every day of your life? So. Yeah, you know, say so one thing that happened out of that is that we didn't know anybody in that circle. And all of a sudden we were connected. <laughs> You know, there yes. was like no separation at all. We all felt like we knew each other for, for always, just yeah. from that simple practice. So, all right, so uh, we'll move on to question number three. Now, outside of all the amazing lives that you're changing and the work that you do, anything you like to do for fun outside, uh, any hobbies, anything like that? I, uh, I, I, I love scuba diving. I love the outdoors. I love nature. I love to ski. I love to golf. I'm a terrible golfer, but I love it. Um, you know, it's one of the things I tell people, if you're really a good golfer, you're probably not working well enough, but, um, or working hard <laughs> enough, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the things that I really love the most, I mean, I was, I was an avid fisherman, loved bass fishing. Uh, but when we got the kids, um, you know, we, we, we were so involved with them that we, we sold the boat cause it was just sitting in the, sitting in the dock, sitting unused. And, um, there's nothing more important to me than spending time with family and friends and create experiences 
uh, for them that I can't get while I'm just out. Not that I don't enjoy my time, but uh, much less about me sports or activities and much more about the, about them. And I, and I fall short of that, but I, I love friends and family and, and good conversations and just uh, experiencing the laughter to uh, is more important now than ever. Wow. Well, you know, you kind of, Oh, I think you kind of answered question four in your answer or question three. I, I mean, you might add to it, but it's it's it kind of fits with what you just said. What's your biggest life lesson from this journey you've been on? Uh, yeah, uh, and, and appreciate every freaking second. And <laughs> um, you know, and, and and I guess that perspective would be I was I was always looking at things. Uh, what happened to me? And when I first heard the, the statement I'm going to make, I went, that's a bunch of hocus pocus. I don't do that at all. I was going to say another word, but we'll keep it general rated. Here. <laughs> um, you know, instead, and then instead, and it's the perspective, did that happen to me or did that happen for me? You know, what's the gold in there? What's the nugget? What's the lesson? It's neither positive or negative. It just is. And I've got a big Irish temper, so that's 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 hard to keep under control. But <laughs> that would probably be the the biggest factor for me is you know what's the good in it? What's the relationship? Uh, how do I love more? How do I laugh more? How do I engage and connect more with family, friends, and people we live with? I guess would be my answer to that. That's uh, we're trying to find answer. that. We're yeah. trying to find the answer to that. Is my, my biggest factor is continue to search. Right, I was answer. gonna say. It's big as life lessons so far. It's like we can continue to, yeah. to learn life lessons each and every day of our journey because we never stop learning. I'm still learning. You're still learning. Even though you're five times my age, you're still learning. Hey, I'm a student <laughs> for life, baby. I'm a student for life. You know, even doing these shows, there's always a new degree. I go, ooh, I like that. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's so interesting. That's why I love doing these shows because there's always more. And I learned something new today. No, I know the snow cones uh, very well. You brought them up before, but I, I learned something new to that. Some new nuances. So you guys are getting some cutting edge stuff right now. Um, so thank you guys all for still, you know, tuning in live with us and, and enjoying this wisdom together. Um, so, Mark, where can people uh, find you? People want to get connected with you. They want to hear you speak, any of that kind of stuff. How can they get connected? Yeah, I mean, uh, social media is always easy. It's the McAuliffe Group. Uh, if you go to Mark McAuliffe, there used to be only one of us uh, on there. Now there's about five of us, so they got dots in between. But uh, W, all the W's. The, there's a boatload of them out there now. But uh, <laughs> if you, well, there's one one original, I guess we would say. Uh, but I guess you try to find me, it's, the other ones uh, are wearing masks. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The wannabes. <laughs> uh, all the W's at the McAuliffe Group dot com or market. Mark at the McAuliffe group dot com is the easiest way to reach me on email. But uh, you know, through you guys uh, is always an affiliation that uh, that I love, and and soon there'll be an extreme focus piece of that as well on there. We got to update the web page, so yeah, I love it. Well, love joining you to the team. Uh, we are so proud to have you part of an extreme focus family. That yeah. you know, we're, I I just am amazed and grateful for the people who have come and you're. You're a big asset to being an extreme focus coach and really proud of that fact. Yeah. And so I want to I want to just give a quick little recap for those that are just uh, tuning in or those that came, maybe came in halfway. Just so you know what we talked about today. I mean, it was, again, as every episode, it's just powerful stuff. Mark is an absolute rock star. And for those that don't know, he obviously is a little frozen right now, but at least we got his voice. His voice that is built for <laughs> movies. He says he's got a face for radio, but he's got a voice for, for movies. And um, I'll just give you a little recap. We talked about the snow cone um, right here is you having your vision in the snow cone and then it's being. It's being the person you want to be. So that way the doing comes naturally. Then you know what to do after that. And then the having is the last thing. Then it's, it, again, most people have that flip. You start with having, showing everybody what you have, so that way you have a self worth, and uh, then you can show people who who you are. But it's it's you got to start with who you are. It's who you are that develops everything in there. And we actually t we got into a few of our beast mode principles. Two of them. We got into the flying fish, which is no boat, no boundaries, no box. It's it's the Steve Jobs of animals, and uh, <laughs> and then we got into our, our Canadian goose flying south for the winter, 
is uh, Val de Pas. The value creates the desire and the power to achieve it. And we put a lot of value on that vision today. So go back, check out the replay. You'll see some great nuggets that, that Mark brought to this. And it's really just uh, amazing stuff. So we'll finish off with the review of the week. Last week, we didn't have you, so I didn't do it. So this week, I want to get the review of the week. All right. Got so it? I always like to give a quote, but I, you know, you're not putting these up because I don't think you can right now. But it uh, is it's right here. No, I know that, but I'm talking Billy Huff. Oh yeah, yeah. Here. Wait, come down. Uh, let's see. I love this. He says, "I learned so much from Dave and Shane Austin, and I want to take my time to say thank you." That's wow. the review of the week, right that's, there. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, thank, thank you, you, Billy. Yeah, because that's why we that's why we do this. I mean, it's yeah. just, it, it really is um, the reason. For all of this. So I'm going to, yeah, and I'm going to read this. It says, if I can read it, um, all elite performance driven individuals, whatever their arena is, will benefit from implementing this unique, unconventional, and edgy approach to higher achievement. It is decisive framework, it, oh, it's decisive framework and method for maximizing performance is one of a kind and simple to learn and integrate immediately. As an army officer competing in the 60 hour nonstop beast, best ranger competition, Dave's coaching, which is what we're talking about, really the, uh, the extreme focus and the beast training, this coaching and mentorship gave us the edge we needed to cross the finish line. And that came from Army Ranger Captain Trevor Shirk. And we thank Trevor so to to reach out and say that he's a beast. He's a total beast. <laughs> and that this beast training could add something for him to take his performance to the next level. And now an already high achiever, yeah. going even higher. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing man. Love it. So that that's it. I mean, we 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 covered a lot of stuff. Great stuff. I hope the uh, you know the audience. I hope you guys really took some notes because there's some amazing gems in there. And thank you guys all for staying tuned uh, live with us. It's always powerful. But even you know, check out the replay. Share this so that people can check out the replay. And and and, and Thanksgiving, we can all give and we can all be thankful for that. And Tony is awesome with it with an uh, explanation wow. and a question mark. <laughs> wow, see, we're, we didn't count oh, our awesome today. Right. I don't we, know how many we, awesomes. We, I don't know how many awesomes. We usually count our awesome count. Did and we the, have any awesomes? I think we had to. Have. We, we had to, do. but I tell you what, I I never have a conversation with Mark that I don't walk away from it feeling stronger, learning something, just in our friendly whatever it is. <laughs> it, it's just been great. I, I'm just blessed to know Mark and and. Uh, I, I think back to one of the first times we really got to know each other. We were uh, on a porch having such great discussions in uh, out at, um, gosh, um, Concord, Massachusetts, right there where Emerson and Thoreau and so many great writers were inspired. So thank you, Mark, really from the bottom of my heart for joining us today. And, and regardless, like everyone, oh, sorry, go on. No, say I, I greatly appreciate that, and uh, the honor is all mine. So thank you so much. Awesome. Well, uh, that, that's it. If you know, if you're still commenting the replay, if you want to reach out to to Mark at all, you know, comment in here and ask him any kind of questions. I'm sure we can uh, pull his arm a little to to comment back and <laughs> give you a response. We'll respond to any comments you guys want to add to this. Any questions you have for any of us, uh, we thank you guys all for tuning in. And thank you, Mark, for bringing it and taking the time to bring such wisdom. I don't know if uh, you got anything, but I got plenty of stuff from it. <laughs> but uh, so thank you. Any, I mean, any last words of wisdom? Anything else you want to just drop on everybody before we uh, officially tune out? No, just uh, happy holidays, everybody. Finish the year well. Happy New Year. And uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, again as I'm a participant on Aloha Friday next week. Yes, yes, awesome. absolutely. Go enjoy the Black Friday uh, deals and go cut down some trees and, and go start. Uh, now we can start putting up the Christmas trees, right? This is now the, <laughs> officially the day we can start doing it, even though we put ours up a few weeks ago. You did? Kind of, yes. Oh, my gosh. So I don't know if that's uh, you know frowned upon. I don't know if anybody uh, else does that, but we kind of jumped the gun this year. Um, but we didn't skip Thanksgiving. 
Thanksgiving still happens. So <laughs> anyways, everybody, aloha from here in Salt Lake City, uh, Utah. I'll be back in Albuquerque next week, but aloha. Aloha, Mark. Enjoy the rest of your, your season. Enjoy your family, everything. Happy Thanksgiving. All the best. Happy Thanksgiving. I got almost.